All right, guys, I'm going to bring you the weekly update of what's going on in the fish room. Um, not going to do any editing. I didn't do any video of me working on what I was doing. I'm just going to kind of uh, do a run through um, update right now. So what I've accomplished so far is I got the frag tank return, or I'm sorry, uh, drain line uh, run. You can see it comes out of a bulkhead here and runs behind this tank and terminates at the sump. I uh, built a Durzo standpipe. This is one and a half, one and a half inch uh, PVC that obviously goes into a one and a half inch bulkhead at the bottom of the tank. Um, it only has one drain line, but one and a half inch should um, be able to handle whatever I'm going to throw into this tank. So I'm not going to do super, super high flow um, like return. Um, the, the tank came pre-drilled with two holes at the bottom, which I am assuming are for um, return lines. Um, I'm not going to use those because it just doesn't make sense to have a piece of PVC coming up all the way from the bottom. Um, you know, unless I kept the uh, returns low, just put lock line in it and kept the returns low. But I'd have to put a check valve on there and I would never, I would never sleep good at night with that. So, um, I'm going to be doing something different. I looked at a whole bunch of different over the rim options for returns. I looked at just putting a regular duck bill, you know, over rim thing. I didn't like the look of it. I looked at sea swirls. I've owned, I've personally owned sea swirls in the past, and I just, uh, I wasn't happy with them. You know, they just, they, they are very limited in what they do. So I did a lot of research on uh, different options, and then I found uh, a Vertex Motion 2000. Um, they run about 249 bucks. So I picked one of these up, and um, it has all levels of controllability. You can control how much you want it to sweep, it, it'll do a full 360 degrees, it'll do 270 degrees, it'll do 180 degrees, it'll do 5 degrees. Just depends on what you set into the controller. It'll handle uh, 2,000 gallons an hour through it. And also, um, you can control how, how fast it oscillates. So it can go slow or you can have it go really fast. Um, so really, really cool unit. Um, pretty uh, psyched to use this thing. I'll be doing a different video for this though so I can show you how it all works and all that stuff but that's what I'm doing for a return is I'm using the Vertex Motion 2000. Um, I haven't really given you much on what this tank is. This is a 120 gallon rimless tank. Obviously it's rimless. Um, it measures 48, 48 inches long, 24 inches front to back and 24 inches tall. Um, it's made out of three quarter inch glass. That's why this tank was so hard for me to move. I mean this, this is seriously no joke. Um, it's a very heavy tank. Um, what I'm doing with those two bulkheads that are supposed to be return lines, I'm just going to put ball valves underneath the tank into the bulkheads and just turn them off. That way if I ever need to use them for anything, um, I'll have that option and I won't have to worry about draining the tank down or anything. I can just hook up to the other side of the ball valve and then turn them on and use it for whatever I need to use it for. Um, I'm starting to trim up the uh, the the foam, I'm actually going to cut the foam flush with the tank all the way around and I'm actually going to build like a countertop on this uh, stand for it so the countertop will probably come out to about here that way I have an area in which to you know set my test kits and all that stuff um, so we'll take a look at the plumbing, it just comes out of this half inch bulkhead here or one and a half inch bulkhead here runs to the sump, it goes up on a 45 and then I got another 45 once it comes up and over the lip of the sump here. Got it 45 five in going into a 90 and then another 90 into the sump where it terminates with the frag tank line here. So this is the main tank, this is the frag tank here. I'm going to be building a piece of acrylic thing here and a 7 inch filter sock is going to go in that. Um, obviously you guys can see that this thing has water in it. Um, just temporary. I have some corals that I had in that frag tank that needed to uh, start getting some light. I don't know if you can see them, but I got the Akins and stuff down there. These are the old reef breeder lights off of the other tank. I put the T5s on, back on that tank for now until I start moving things over. Um, there was nothing wrong with the T5s keeping the coral alive. Um, I still have that video coming for you guys on uh, why I went back to the LEDs and what the, uh, the future holds for this. Um, well, I'll just tell you now what the future holds for this. So, and uh, actually, you know, I'll, I'm going to hold that for another video because that's going to need to be just like a separate topic. Um, I got some live rock down in there, and then the the little two gallon uh, Home Depot bucket has live rock rubble. I just put it into that bucket because I really didn't feel like scooping the rubble out later on. So that just kind of keeps it all contained. And I have a power head that is just shooting straight down into there. 
um, into the bucket. And then uh, what I'm using for flow in here for right now is a Mag 12. I don't know if you guys can see it down there. Uh, two reasons. One, the Mag 12 moves plenty of water for this 100 gallon uh, stock tank. And also, Mag pumps run very hot and it's adding heat to the water. We kind of have a cold snap right now here in Arizona and that pump is adding just enough heat into this stock tank to keep the corals happy. So that's uh, what we got going on here. So let me st take a step back and you can see kind of what's going on. This is uh, pretty much the final layout of everything I got going on. I'm going to be adding another 120 gallon tank that measures the same as that one and it's going to go against the windows over there and that's going to be a uh, refugium, a big show refugium. It's actually the tank that I showed you guys a while back that I was going to use when I was uh, getting ready to move. I can't sell it because it's scratched up so bad nobody wants it so I'm just going to use it. And if I just use it for a refugium and keep the glass you know, clean, um, it should do alright as a refugium. I don't need the refugium to be completely uh, clean and clear. Um, I'm having an issue with the bulkhead that came with the stock tank. Um, I tightened up the uh, the bulkhead as much as I could. I mean, I got my pipe wrenches. I mean, I got some serious pipe wrenches that I took out to work on this stock tank. And uh, so, anyways, the bulkhead was leaking. I tightened it the best I could, and it's uh, it's still leaking. Like it little dribbles. I mean, it, I'm not losing gallons a day. I might be losing like, you know, maybe half an ounce a day. But nonetheless, it's still leaking. The only thing I can think to do at this point now is either replace the bulkhead or just slather the thing full of silicone which I think I'm just gonna slather it full of silicone because that's what just about everybody does is just slather it with silicone I don't I don't know anyways um, so that's the only issue that I've had so far is the stock tank just has a little drip right now so um, yeah um, I'm gonna be running a uh, J-COD which is formerly JBO I'm gonna be running a J-COD uh, DCT 15,000 and I'm going to be running it internal um, because of the problem I'm having with the bulkhead um, I just I, I don't want to run an external pump at this time until I figure something out with that and I may never need to use a, uh, a uh, external pump um, I just like the option of being able to run an external pump but for for now um, I'm just gonna go ahead and go with an internal pump and uh, we'll set it in here and like I said it'll be the JCOD DCT uh, 15,000 and we'll run it in here uh, next up on the on the uh, plans is going to be building the manifold for the returns. So that's going to probably be uh, next week's project, next weekend's project. I don't know if you guys are noticing. I keep bringing all the updates on the weekend because that's the only time I really have planned to do, or only time I really have time to do the projects in here. And like I said, I'm kind of taking it slow because I don't want it too too thrown it together. I kind of want it to be somewhat clean of a uh, of an install so uh, I'm just kinda taking my time with it making sure before I start bringing in livestock everything's working well I'm gonna probably run the system empty you know with just regular salt water for about a week make sure nothing leaks make sure everything's kinda going flawlessly that kinda thing and uh, slowly start introducing the the, uh, the livestock um, when I first eh, well, we'll save that for another update so what else I got going on this is the uh, controller here for the uh, vertex motion you can control the speed and these two buttons here are to set the stopping point and the end point for the oscillation so like I said you can do up to 360 degrees on that thing um, I got another video that I'm gonna be doing for uh, for the motion to show you guys exactly how it works how to set it and all that because I tried doing research on this thing and I couldn't find any videos that were any good for this thing so hopefully I can bring you guys something that's decent and uh, you know maybe bring something to life that you guys may have not ever seen or that you thought maybe may may have not been an option for you guys because you didn't know about it so everybody talks sea swirl sea swirl sweet sea swirls and this is basically basically a sea swirl on on major steroids and uh, I think it's gonna be a good product but that's to be determined but so far um, I'm liking what it's offering um, I'll bring you guys over here let me take this off of my head let's take a look at what I got going on with my water tank system here 65 gallon is full right now you can see this is where the water level is right here this is 60 gallons and this is uh, where the water level is and 65 gallons is all the way at the top so that's probably about 63 gallons 62 63 gallons where uh, that float valve stops it um, so I'm, I'm, I'm starting to finish the plumbing um, this weekend I think I'm done though for tonight because I'm just kind of burnt out on it but um, 
Obviously we're coming out of this bulkhead here. Three quarter inch bulkhead goes to a ball valve, which then goes to a union. I put the union here in case I ever need to uh, take the tank out for replacement or to clean the tank out, you know, because algae grows inside of these things and whatnot and sludge. They get just nasty sometimes, so you want to clean them. So this will allow me to uh, undo this and I'll be able to take it outside and rinse it out. Um, then it goes underneath. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. To another 90. And then I got it butted up to a T. And I got the T coming out here at this uh, ball valve here. <coughs> this is so I can get uh, RODI water whenever I want it. Um, you know, I don't have it glued in yet. But, yeah, I mean, this is basically going to be RODI for, you know, rinsing out carbon or, you know, things like that. Um, and then when this is closed, and I'm going to have another ball valve up here, um, and that will control the water flow to the tank. Um, this pipe here is going to strictly fill the 35-gallon tank for mixing salt water. And there's just going to be another ball valve here that I can turn on and off. And then a 90 down at the end there where it will drop into the tank and fill up this tank. Um, the pump I'm using is a uh, Blue Line 70 HD uh, for mixing the salt. Um, so how this is working is I got it coming out of the bulkhead right into a uh, right into a ball valve, so I can uh, stop the water flow and whatnot in case again I need to uh, take the tank out, clean it, and whatnot. I got it going into a piece of flexible vinyl tubing. Um, helps with noise vibration. It just all around helped me with just setting this up easier without having to use 45s and hard piping the whole thing and I didn't have to buy another union because if I ever need to take it off I can just take the hose clamps that will be here off and just pull the pump off um, and I, I have a union on the pump in case I just need to take the pump off or something so um, yeah so then it goes to the supply end of the pump here I used another piece of flexible tubing because I needed I needed it I just had to have it there because I had to finagle all the pipe other piping so basically it comes up from the pump comes up to a T here and uh, I'm gonna have a ball valve that I'm gonna be installing right here um, I'm just here, it's gonna go right here and when I turn the ball valve off that'll be here that'll stop water flow from going up and over and then I'll open up this one hook a little hose right now this is just temporary until I make sure that this is exactly where the where I want the sump but eventually I'm going to hard pipe it right to the sump. That way when I do my water changes and I want to introduce the new salt water back into the tank, I just got to open that ball valve and close the other one. And it will direct all the salt water from that tank into the system. So, and then when I close this ball valve and then open up this one that will be right here, that will be my recirculation from um, the suction to the return and that will be what mixes the salt. Um, I have the pipe coming up on 245s and I'm going to have it meet with the pipes from the other tank and they'll pretty much go right into the same hole that I'm going to drill into the lid there and uh, that's how I'm going to mix my salt water so pretty simple um, hard to map out though when you're just trying to do it off the top of your head um, but it'll be a pretty cool setup um, I got the RODI system kind of in its final resting place here um, I cut the lines and I extended a couple of them so I can get the shutoff valve and the uh, the flush kit thing um, front and center so I didn't have to reach behind the membranes so that's pretty much all I did different there and I just have them you know lined right here I was gonna hang them from the rack but if I would have hung them from the rack that would have left me no room to walk through here because I'm already limited in space as it is in here so uh, hopefully that was a good enough explanation but once uh, I actually get the whole thing up and running I'll be able to show you you know by flipping the valves and showing you exactly what everything does but um, I'm not the only person on YouTube that has a setup like this. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory if you watch, you know, the thousands of other people that have this. Um, I got peppermint shrimp in there. I got ten of them because when I start bringing in the rock from the uh, tank inside, all the rock is going to go in here, and I'm going to put all the corals in here on a frag rack and bare bottom and whatnot. And uh, right now, I'm working on killing all the Aptasia with Aptasia X right now. And once I get them all to pretty much being just babies, and I, you know, there's just, there, I got an Aptasia problem, guys. I mean, that's all there is to it. So I'm going to put all the rock into this stock tank once I get all the big ones killed off or, you know, smaller or whatnot. And I'm just going to let the peppermint shrimp go to town on the rock for a couple of months. And uh, I'll be monitoring the rock, make sure, you know, I don't continue to see Aptasia. And then we'll start to introduce the rock into the main display. 
I'll probably end up moving all the corals into the frag tank while I introduce all the rock back in. Once I get the rock back into this tank, you know, after the peppermint shrimp did their thing, uh, I'm not going to start bringing corals in immediately. I'm going to actually <laughs> set the tank up and just watch it. Make sure I don't see an aftasia popping out here and there because if I start seeing that, then I'll just throw the peppermint shrimp in here. Um, so that's uh, pretty much all I got going on, guys. I think that's it for me this, this weekend. I don't think I'm going to do anything else. Um, I'll wait till next weekend to uh, do what, what I have uh, planned for next weekend, which is uh, plumbing the return lines. So that should be fun. Anyways, we'll see you guys in uh, the next update. All right. Later on, guys.